Welcome to the Crime Lab, Detective. Glad you're here to help us crack the case. Let's get started. This is the place where we analyze evidence, collect data, compare data, and form conclusions. Here, have a look at this. These steps are part of what we call the scientific method. The scientific method is a way of thinking through problems or challenges. It was developed and refined throughout history as great thinkers attempted to gain a greater understanding of how the world works. Aristotle, Copernicus, Galileo, Isaac Newton, Thomas Edison, Marie Curie, Albert Einstein, all of them and countless others use some form of the scientific method to make great discoveries and answer life's biggest questions. So, how can we use the scientific method to catch the thief? Well, we start by asking a question. In this case, our question is who is the running well thief? Then, we gather evidence. Gathering evidence is what you did at the crime scene. Then, we formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess about an answer to the question. My hypothesis about the running well case is that it's an inside job. Once we have our hypothesis, we collect data. Collecting data is where our math skills start to come into play. It's important that all the data we collect be as accurate as possible. The whole case hinges on it. If we're off, we might not find the guilty party at all. Or worse, we might arrest an innocent person. Accuracy is important. After we collect all that data, we have to analyze it. Again, we rely on our math skills by comparing values, making graphs, combining results. It all depends on what we're trying to find out. And finally, we determine whether our hypothesis is correct. That means we report back to the detectives on the case and hopefully identify our criminal. So, want to give it a shot? Let's go over to a workstation and check out some of the evidence from the crime scene. Ah, yes, the perpetrator's footprint. We'll need to measure the dimensions of the footprint, the length from the toe to the heel, and the width at the widest point where the ball of the foot would be. Once we have these measurements, we can use the data to determine the size of the shoe that made these footprints. Knowing the shoe size can help us narrow down the pool of suspects. Ready to try it out, detective? Remember, it's important to have accurate results, so don't be afraid to measure more than once to make sure your data is correct. Then you'll get a chance to compare your results against sizing charts to determine the shoe size. Click on a workstation behind me to get started. 